legal. Um, so really, they they were they were legal when they were established, and now since situations have changed, they're not so much anymore. Um, it talks about in this chapter how you can expand them, if or when you can change them, and um, it also talks about proving non-conforming status. It's really on the burden of the property owner, or the business owner, to prove that they were legally established or um, legally built at the time that that was established. Heightened area exceptions. Um, this gives what it says, exceptions for the height, um, yard exceptions, uh, special regulations adjacent to airport and landing strips. There's some height restrictions as far as the landing zones and, and such um, adjacent to the airports. Um, we have exceptions in there for overhangs and um, chimneys, things like that. Parking and loading requirements. These are additional parking requirements typically based on use. Also outline standards, the size of the parking space, the size, the width of drive aisles, whether they're one way or two way. Um, and then there's a couple other details um, about the regulations in there. Next section is landscaping. Um, talks about the general intent and the requirements of a landscaping plan, how landscaping should be maintained, uh, exceptions, planting requirements, it talks about um, the size um, requirements in there, parking lot landscaping, what you need to have around parking lots, what you have to need, what you have to have in um, into your parking lot islands, when you need the islands, what can be in the islands. Um, it talks about street trees, how many per, it's one per 40 feet. Um, talks about requirements of landscaping along building facades, breaking up large expanse, expansions of buildings um, with some landscaping, and then screening as far as screening of um, trash dumpsters, screening of um, mechanical, mechanical equipment. There's a couple other in there too. Next chapter talks about signs. Um, I think Travis knows the most about this chapter. <laughs> Travis does uh, all of our sign permit applications. Um, in this chapter, it gives regulations per district, the location, um, the number, and um, the type of sign. Talks about temporary signs and what those are for how long you can have them. Talks about structural quality. Um, there's things in there about how it can be lit, whether it can have moving text, um, and then it talks about uh, sign permits in there. We have land use permits. Um, these are uses permitted on open, vacant, or unimproved land, and then it outlines procedure for uh, getting a land use permit. <coughs> Certificate of occupancy, which really talks about um, you can't occupy a building or use unless it complies with all the regulations of the ordinance. Um, our applications and procedures section, this is where it outlines the types of applications regarding as far as in the zoning ordinance, this is on top of what is in the subdivision regulations that I already discussed. We have rezoning applications, conditional use permit applications, special use permit applications, site plan process, and then preliminary and final development plans. Um, the preliminary and final, well, the preliminary development plan will be paired with the rezoning when you have a rezoning to a planned district. You will see one of those in November. Um, Final development plans are very similar to a site plan. 
Um, and then the conditional use permits and the special use permits are very similar in that um, you will see a site plan with them. Um, we can offer some flexibility as far as um, and additional requirements as far as landscaping and, and things like that to mitigate the impacts of those uses. Um, the chapter also outlines the application requirements. Um, those, all those application requirements are adopted by resolution by the council or the commission. I think the commission, the planning commission adopts the application requirements by resolution. Um, and you'll see, you see those in your packet, they're with the application and it's a second page. Um, it outlines the application processes um, and then the application consideration criteria in there. It, I don't think it calls it the golden criteria, but we've talked about the golden criteria. Those are mentioned in there. And then the um, how to appeal the decisions of those types of applications. I'm going to stop here and ask you if you have any questions on the applications because those are what you're going to be acting on um, and they get a little confusing. I know right, a question right off the bat, it's uh, under who may apply, it says application for a zoning text amendment may be filled only by the governing body or planning commission. I didn't is have that, that one in there. Is that a process that like <laughs> usually do zoning amendments usually start with the commission or does um, that usually come from the council? The process, I don't have a lot of history here so I, I don't know that we've done recently a lot of text amendments. The process comes from state statute and that says that either the planning commission or the city council can initiate. Initi yeah, I'm assuming the yes. governing body would have to be the final. Yeah, and with my, my experience has been that usually staff will write a staff report and say either we've had a request for this or we've noticed that this is an issue, something that needs to be changed. Um, sometimes those will come out of the border zoning appeal, something that they're seeing repeat requests for variances for. Um, and we'll say, and we'll ask you to initiate it, or we'll ask the council to initiate it. I don't know that matters which one the council meets more frequently, so they may go to them. And then it would go through a um, similar process to what you would see the rezoning, the conditional use permit, and special use permit, where we'd come with a staff report, proposed language, would go through a public hearing, and then the commission would make a recommendation and then that would go to the council for a final determination. Yeah, because with the, with the new comprehensive plan, I'm assuming there might be a few of these yeah. coming along. So I just was curious on that process. Yeah, and, and the, the process is if you're doing a whole zoning ordinance, um, it'll follow a similar process. Um, they usually take a little longer <laughs> since you have the whole code to review, but yeah, that's that's um, that's a typical process. Chairman Mader, I just want to make a comment if I could. Uh, Please. We do expect, actually, within the next six months, to initiate a signed code amendment. I think uh, we've already talked to the commission about it. The commission met previous. Uh, I think that given that it's an entirely new commission, perhaps we need to bring that to you to get your permission to initiate that. Um, there's a lot of background with the sign code. Uh, it has some, has some real challenges. So uh, there are some, going to be some things, at least we think, that are not going to wait until there's a conference. And really, uh, what my experience with text amendments is that people get the idea that just because we're initiating the process means we're changing it, where really it's something that we've identified and we're asking your permission to spend time on it, 
to look into it to see if it needs to be changed. We may come back and say, 